Aloha and welcome. I'm WH6AZ, here to bring you high signal insights about Radio Mail, the Winlink iPhone application I created. Today, I'm going to show you how you can create a portable VARA hotspot so you can get your email from anywhere. And when I say anywhere, how about operating from the tropical jungle of Hawaii? Stay with me and I'll guide you through every step of the process. Let's take a look at what we need. First of all, I'm going to get the B-Link T4, little computer here, with the battery. What's great about this computer is that they only need 12 volts to run. So I'm going to go ahead and connect that. And start it up. And I have here a DigiRig sound card that can just plug into USB and uh, plug into my radio. And let's just grab my radio and set it up. So today we're going to use um, the Kenwood TH74 and uh, I'm just going to pretend we are off-grid, which we are right now and uh, fortunately there is a um, Winlink gateway nearby that um, we can connect to. So first we want to check and make sure the hotspot is starting um, on the device. So here it is, shows up, I'll connect to it. So then my phone can just basically pair with the computer. Alright. Okay, so now I can just launch Radio Mail and go in settings and I will go and look for the modem that's being advertised from the B-Link. So I'm going to select the THD74, that's the profile I want to use. And one of the things that's important to notice is that when using a HT, oftentimes the volume control here is also how you turn on the HT and uh, it's hard to remember if you have the right settings, which is very important when you're doing a, a connection. So. In order to actually see that, there is an audio monitor I can use here. I'm going to bring it up. It's connecting. It actually shows me the volume that's coming from the radio. And I can just adjust it. I want it to be about uh, mid-range here. So, like so. Seems about right. Okay. So now I'm just going to go out. Okay, so I moved around. Hopefully we can have both uh, device in the camera field here. I'm going to go ahead and compose an email. And uh, one other trick you can use is you can press the little microphone down here and I can dictate a message sending hello from the field. There you go. And now I'm going to go ahead and look for my favorite station here, KHXS. And I'm going to try to see if I can make a connection. So Radio Mail is connecting to the modem, launching the VARA modem on the headless computer. And here we have the radio already connecting. There we go. It's connected. Sending the message. And there you go, we've been able to send an email off-grid using Radio Mail, an HT, and a headless computer managed by Radio Mail. So now that we're back at the shack, before we jump in and see what's inside that computer, let's talk a little bit about the challenges of running VARA on a headless computer. VARA is designed as a GUI application. It means that the user is expected to interact with it, with the keyboard, with the mouse, and be able to actually see the window, which of course on a headless computer, you can't do any of that. A headless computer means you don't have a monitor, you don't have a keyboard, you don't have a mouse. It's really meant to operate as a server and VARA is not designed for that. 
Fortunately, there is a solution for that, and the solution is a program I created called Varani, which is really meant to act as a nanny for Vara. Let's take a look at Varani and what it does. First of all, if you look at the architecture diagram here, you notice that if a client wants to connect to a headless computer, it needs to know the address, the host, and the port to connect to Vara, but also in some cases to read control to be able to do cat control for Vara HF. All this information had to be configured manually previously, and what you really would want to have is much like nowadays you don't configure printer on the network, you just discover them, you want the ability to do service announcement. So job one for Varani is to be able to broadcast and do DNS service announcement and basically declare on the network, there is a Vara instance, here is where it lives, here is its name, and here is where you're going to find it. And Radio Mail can listen to those messages and basically allow you to automatically show you a friendly name and you can select the device and connect to it and not have to deal with the settings. The second thing that Varani supports is really allowing you to do remote management, meaning that it can start and stop the modem for you. And it's important because in some cases, if you have the same computer and that is shared for VAR FM, VAR HF, connected to radio that has the same sound card, you can't really run both instances at once. So the starting and the stopping of VARA needs to happen remotely and Varani facilitate that and can start and stop the instance for you. The other thing you may want to do also is have more than one configuration file. VARA doesn't support multiple devices, but if you swap the configuration file before you start VARA, you can achieve the same result. Varani will manage um, an INI file per device and make sure that it's set up before VARA starts. Last thing, if you're on a headless of your mount, you're not going to be able to see the gauge on the VARA application, and you're not going to be able to verify that your audio level is correct. And Varani also helps in that. It will connect to the sound interface and will send you a representation of the audio stream coming in, so you can make sure that your volume is set up appropriately and that everything will work. First of all, you're going to need some sort of computer to run VARA. And while you could be running that on a Raspberry Pi, I prefer to use an alternative, the billing here, uh, T4 computer, which is a great option uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, it is relatively inexpensive. They are here on Amazon on sale for 85 bucks. Usually you can get them for less than $100. But also they run 12 volts, so that makes it compatible with the rest of your batteries or the equipment uh, you have for your radio and because it has an Intel processor you don't need to deal with any sort of emulation they come with Windows pre-installed so that makes it very easy to run VARA out of the box you can also install Linux if you prefer I'll show that in a future video on how to do that so this is the first piece you need you need a computer you're going to need also a sound card my favorite option here and what you've seen me use is the DigiRig it's a very small uh, sound card. You can get them for about $50 here. And it's just a fantastic device. You plug USB on one end, and then you just have an uh, audio jack here. You can get all sorts of cable for um, various radio you have. Just pick the option that works for you, and, and you get everything you need. So once you get that equipment, then the next step is to set up Windows so that Vara can run and Varani can get installed on that. So let's take a look at that. So here we are now connected to that Windows computer. And I'm going to go ahead and download the Varani agent. So I can just go to GitHub, Island Magic slash Varani with two N. And I can just find the release here, click on it. And I have uh, the choice for a few packages here and I'm going to go download the Windows one. There's all, there are also builds for various um, architecture of Linux, MD64 and ARM version as well, if you prefer. But for now, I'm going to use the Windows. And when I click on that, you'll notice uh, Windows is prompting me things that this potentially is a suspicious um, or dangerous because it contains an executable. So you can just go and ignore 
and download it. Uh, or if you prefer, you can actually build it yourself from source, so you can make sure you know exactly what you're installing on your computer. And here I'm just going to expand the zip file. Uh, and there are two files in the zip you're going to find Varani itself, which is the executable that you can run from the command line, as well as a sample JSON file, which is a configuration file for Varani. So I'm going to extract into my home directory. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to uh, look for my home folder. And I'm not a Windows user, so bear with me here. And I'm going to select folder and extract. OK. So now I should probably have placed this in a folder. So now I'm going to go in the terminal. And I'm using PowerShell, but you can use what, what you feel comfortable with. I'm using this so at least I don't um, mistype commands all the time. And so here it is, uh, Varani and the JSON file. So let's take a look at the configuration file and see what, uh, what it can contain. Um, so I think I can just open the notepad. Let's see if that works. Yes, it works. So uh, this is just a plain text file and it's, it contains structured data. And it shows you a couple of examples of what you can you can uh, use for configuring your setup here. So I'm going to try to make uh, use the simplest uh, configuration possible that can work here. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete what I don't need. So first of all, you'll see the port. This is the port that the agent uh, listens to and that uh, radio mail connects to to execute various commands when it needs it. So normally you don't really need to change it. And then you have an array here that defines the various modem configuration essentially that you want to define for your system. So I'm going to define a, I'm using varfm, so I want to make sure the type is varfm because the varfm and varhf are advertised differently. So this allows radio mail to know what to look for depending on the context of what you're trying to do. So it's best to describe it here. Uh, here it points to the Vara uh, program itself, the executable. And, and here is where it gets interesting here. You can actually define your own uh, configuration file so that when Vara uh, is launched, or actually before it's launched, this configuration file can be set up and it's being used. So this looks pretty good. So I'm going to save what I have here. Um, but before I start everything, I'm going to want to create a configuration file specially for this device. And I'll show you in a minute why, why that's useful. So I'm going to go and launch VARFM itself. And I'll need to do a few things here to make sure that it's set up properly. So first, I want to make sure that the uh, sound card selected match my sound card. In this case, uh, it is the sound UNP, um, USB PNP sound device is the DigiRig. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to close that. Second thing I need to do is to make sure that the PTT is set to the proper device. And here it says um, set up to COM and COM11. So if I don't know if you're unsure where your DigiRig is, you can always bring the um, good old device manager and in device manager there is the com port section here and you can look at the kind of device you have connected in this case the silicon lab usb bridge is the device that's in digirig and it's set for com 11 so this looks correct so now i can just go and close vara fm and then what i'm going to do is go in um, the directory where Vara is, VARFM. And if I look at what's in here, I have the varifm.ini, uh, which is the main configuration file that uh, Vara uses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a copy of this and I'm going to, oops, that's not what I want. Va FM, and I'm going to 
name it THD74. It doesn't matter what you name it as long as that's what you use in uh, in Varani configuration. So, all right. So now I have one created here. Great. And if I go look at my configuration, this is correct. So this basically instructs Varani to say, when you start this device, uh, open varifm and also use this configuration file. And this allows me to essentially create as many um, modem or as many devices as I want. And they may have different sound card, they may have different COM port that they use, and they will be swapped automatically um, for me. So this looks pretty good. I'm going to go and save the file here. So I'm going to close this now, and I'm going to start Varani. And uh, by default, it will look for the JSON configuration file in the same directory. We'll do some parsing to make sure it's correct. And we'll start and bind to the, uh, to the interface. So now let's uh, run a test to make sure everything is configured properly. So I'm going to start a terminal here from another computer. And what I can do is just tell net to this uh, Windows computer on the 8273 port, which is where Varani listens to. And I can issue a few comments here. I can list the modem that I have defined. And here it is, the THD74. And I can ask Varani to start it. And what should happen here is, yep, it just went ahead and started Varifm. And um, and basically launch it for me. And then when I go and stop it, it should shut it down and restore the uh, original configuration file here. If you look at the logs, uh, it actually found my particular INI file, set it up, and then basically uh, restore uh, that INI after that. So it looks like we're in pretty good shape here. So let's head over to radio mail now, and I can go into settings var FM modem and you'll notice now this has changed a little bit you'll have a default modem much like for the packet mod and, and where you'll discover devices like mobilink and if you use the option before it will say manual and now I can go and it will auto discover the devices on the network so here's my THD 74 you can just click on it and what's nice about it is you also have a audio monitor because in a headless situation, you're not gonna be able to see necessarily the um, volume of the sound card and you wanna be able to adjust it on your radio. So I can just click here and it will connect. Let's take a look here on the um, radio I'm running here. And so this is too quiet. I'm changing the volume. I can go, it tells me when it's too loud. And I'm going to go about mid-range here. And you'll see here it says microphone, USB, PNP sound device. If you remember, this is the sound card that we define in VARA. So, and so Varani will go inspect the INI file from VARA. We'll figure out which sound card to use. We'll connect and stream some data back to radio mail. It doesn't stream the, all the audio, but it will just, it just does, does some analysis and send back uh, RMS, uh, DBFS, um, essentially value so it can be displayed here. So this looks good. I'm going to go back and try to make a connection. So found the connection. I'm monitoring here on the second radio and it's getting to be really loud. There you go. That was the connection. Um, and basically now you've seen on the Windows machine, it just started by itself, did the connection and shut it down all and it's done. And now you're done. So now let's take a look at how you would define more than one radio and, and why that is useful. So I'm going to go back here and stop Vara and Varani. And I'm going to open the configuration file here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this section here. 
and I'm going to rename it for my IC705. IC705. So here you can really put any name you want. And um, because we live in the 21st century and I really like my IC705, I'm going to add a little uh, heart emoji here. And I'm going to rename the configuration here to have a specific VARA configuration file as well. So this looks pretty good. And now the other thing I need to do is to start VARA FM and make sure I have a configuration that matches what I want. So I'm going to go and look for the sound card. So this is pointing to the DJ rig. I'm now going to choose this other sound card that I just plugged in uh, off camera. So here we go, microphone, speaker. So that's good. And then the PTT is different. Um, it's going to use cat control and it's going to um, use the, where do I find it here? Icon, there you go. Uh, now I don't remember which port it's using, so I'm going to use the same trick as before. I'm going to look at the device manager and hopefully it will tell me where my IC705 showed up. There it is, um, CIV COM7. So you can just go here, COM7, choose the ICOM, IC705. Uh, it should be up here. There you go. Okay, and the CIV address, make sure it corresponds to your device in case you've changed it, but I think this looks pretty good. So now these settings are correct and I can go and close VARA. And now I have a copy essentially of the configuration file that I care about. So I'm going to make sure I make a copy. No, that's not how you do it. There you go. So now I'm going to copy the VARA FM.i9 and I'm going to clone it to VARA FM.ic705.i9, which is what I specified in my um, in my are any configuration. So this looks good. I basically have now two configuration files, the THD74 and the IC705. Uh, you can also inspect those files if you're ever uh, you're curious what's in them. Uh, this is not helping here. You can just go look at that and it will show you basically the input device, microphone, speakers. Down there you should find also the CAD control all the things we've defined and uh, it should be basically correct here. All right, so now let's go ahead and make a connection. Well, actually I have to go back to, I should reopen to PowerShell here. I'm going to go back to, let's restart Varani here. And while this is starting, we can go back to Radio Mail and um, look for a new device here. So I'm going to go back in Settings, RFM, and here it is. We find our previously defined modem and then the new IC705 with a little heart emoji. How cool is that? So now let's take a look at the audio interface. This is a different codec, so it swapped the file correctly. We're looking at a uh, pretty good volume here. So now let's see if we can make a connection. Looking for the device. There you go. It did a connection. And what's really interesting now is that basically if I want to go back to my other configuration, I'll just go here, select 
chg74 go back here and press connect and now it should make a connection through my other radio Now, before you go, there are probably a few things you're going to want to make sure you do so that your computer functions well for you in the field. First thing is you need to ensure that Varani automatically launch when Windows start. There are plenty of instruction online that shows you how to do that. The second thing is you're going to make sure that there is a hotspot set up in your computer so your iPhone get an IP address and can talk to it. One way to do that is you can go in the option here and let me actually move myself out of the way and you can start the mobile hotspot by just clicking here. One of the issue with that is that this does not survive a restart. So in order for it to stick, you need to tweak a few configuration and I'll put a link in the description that shows you exactly what to do. And the third thing you're gonna need is some sort of dongle to essentially trick the computer into thinking there is a display attached. This is something that's very peculiar to Windows, but with a display, even if you set up Windows to automatically log you on, it won't do it because it feels like it needs a display to do that. So I actually got tricked by that. I didn't know that was the case. So you have a basically little dongle that's called a virtual um, display. And those devices will basically trick the computer into thinking there is a monitor and it will start up and get configured for you. So I strongly encourage you to check all these settings, restart your computer, make sure that it actually boots up, start the uh, Wi-Fi hotspot for you, logs in automatically, and everything is good before you head into the field. I made the mistake and believe me, you don't want to find yourself in the field without a computer booting up. As a last resort, you can also install uh, Microsoft Remote Desktop on your phone. This would give you at least the ability to see what's going on if there is some failure. But for the most part, you really want uh, to achieve a headless system where you apply the power, everything starts up and is ready for you to go. I hope you enjoyed this video and that will motivate you to create your own portable Vara FM hotspot so you too can check your email from anywhere. And now go outside, get on the air. Until next time, 73 and aloha.